Thank you for joining us today at Agri Supply. My name is Kiel Whitford, Product Training Specialist. Today we'll be reviewing the basics of hydraulic cylinders. Uh, these particular cylinders are, as you can see, are what we call tie rod cylinders, meaning there's four bolts around that holds two end caps in place, and we'll we'll break all these down in just a minute. We have two different brands of cylinders here to talk about today. They'll be Grizzly and Energy. So uh, as we get ready to talk about the basics of cylinders. Come on in and join us a little closer. Okay, now, cylinders. As you can see, there are different bore diameters here on, on, our, on our table here. This particular, these particular two here are what we consider a two inch bore. Uh, and then this one, as you can see sideways here, as you see on the Grizzly label, is a two inch by six inch cylinder. Meaning the two inch is the bore, or the diameter of this barrel type assembly, or cylinder, and then it, it, will, it will go six inches further when, when the fluid is applied and is fully extended. Now, this next one is a two and a half by eight. There again, bore and diameter. This one is a three by eight. Let's skip on over to this one, this other grizzly cylinder. This one is, of course, the larger. It's a four by eight. Now, four inch bore, eight inch stroke. All of these Grizzly cylinders are rated at the 2500 PSI, and they are a fine cylinder uh, that, that they're, they're heavily tested, and we feel very good about the quality and workmanship of our Grizzly cylinders. Now, okay, let's talk about some keys to how to measure a cylinder. Say you may want to know, say I need a new cylinder, how in the world am I going to tell those people how to measure a cylinder, or how, what I need? Of course, maybe yours, does, the sticker is gone, or Maybe it was another brand or something, but here's a few tips on how to help you help you help us determine what you need to get you going. I bet I can't say that again. All right, now, okay, take for instance, let's start with here. We're gonna measure kinda somewhere close to the center of this rod to the center of this rod, and we're gonna see that it is two and a half inches. So in a nutshell, all you're doing is measuring the, the outer diameter of this cylinder, of, of the barrel type of cylinder. Now, so we know that, and of course that checks out true as we see here on our sticker at two and a half inches. Now we want to determine the stroke. So, of course, in this situation we already know that this has an eight inch stroke, but let's try something here. Let's measure the length of the barrel itself. Now, it measures roughly 10 inches. So, as you'll see in a few minutes, we're gonna take this cylinder apart. In, in each of these cases, you just deduct two inches which will determine the length of your stroke. All right, so if we deduct two inches from 10, we have eight inches, eight inch stroke cylinder here. Okay, now, of course, this will be the same way. This one is the three inch bore. Let me move this out of the way. We measure kind of, kind of run around the outer case and there you kind of get around the center of that rod to the center of that one. And as you see, as you see on the tape, you're getting the three inches. Now, okay, we'll measure the length of the, the barrel type of assembly. It measures, as you can see, 10 inches. We deduct the two inches. We know then that it's a eight inch stroke cylinder. All right, now, so we, we have that one solved. Now this one is another brand cylinder. As I mentioned, it's the energy brand cylinder. Another fine cylinder sold at Agri Supply. And these, I believe, are made in Iowa. Fine, fine, fine cylinder as well. All right. Now, these, this particular one, if we wanted to determine the size of it, we would start again by measuring the outer part. We get three. Then here, we measure the barrel type assembly. We get 14. So we can go ahead and deduct the two inches from the 14, and we come up with a 12-inch stroke. So. 3 inch bore, 12 inch stroke. Now, same thing. Now, as you see here on this 4 by 8 cylinder, and on some of the, uh, the other 8 inch cylinders I was just showing you, let's look at the label here a moment. Now, as we see, it says 4 inch by 8 inch ASAE. Alright, ASAE, American Society of Agriculture Engineers. That means this cylinder has been uh, built or in the proper uh, measurements as long as it meets their standards that's no matter really what brand it is 
it's going to be the same dimensions and, and so, so forth. So, but now let's take a notice. Uh, let's see. Now I know we, and I just want to tell you just a minute here. Let me see one of, one of the major differences that I see just in mainly helping you identify the cylinder. Let me take uh, these two cylinders here. Okay, here I'm using a two and a half by eight and a two by eight. Now, let's see. Take these. I'm not doing it very quietly. Okay. Now, we're going to pretend here a moment. We're going to pretend that these two cylinders are also at the same distance back here and lined up here as well. So, as you can see here, this particular one, the clevis end comes pretty much all the way into the casing. This one it does not. There's a couple of inches gap there. Now, referring to, if, you're, if you have one of our buyer's guides handy or if you're on our website, you can go to the section we have on grizzly cylinders. Now, just to, uh, I'm not sure how good this will pick up, but let's just look at a 2 by 8 inch cylinder. As you can see, we have a 2 by 8 ASAE and a 2 by 8 just 2 by 8 cylinder. Now let's look across here. The rod diameter on both of them are 1 and a 16. Then we move on across to the retracted length. Just a reminder, retracted length is when it's fully closed in. And when it gives the retracted length, you basically are measuring. Let's see. Let's zoom in on how to measure. Like on this 2 by 8, center of pin to center of pin would be 20 and a quarter. That's the ASAE. But on just the regular 2 by 8 cylinder, it's 18 and a quarter. Therefore, it's two inches shorter. So there again, you see this difference here. So in the mounting of your cylinder, that is something you need to take notice of. And before you give us a call, try to try to find out, try to do your measuring ahead of time to tell, be able to tell us what that retracted length is. You know, there again, from center of pin to center of pin. Now this particular one, as I said earlier, was a two by six inch cylinder. According to our chart, its retracted length is 16 and a quarter inches. Let's check it out and see. Okay, holding it center of pin, the center of pin. Yes, indeed, 16 and a quarter inches. So, now if the retracted length is 16 and a quarter inches, and on this cylinder we just said that it had a six inch stroke, so that retracted length is 16 and a quarter inches. So, if we wanted to know how far it was going to be when we had it fully extended, we would simply add the six inch stroke because that's what it's going to be when it's, you know, that's, that's the maximum amount of stroke this cylinder is going to have. Add the six inches to the 16 and a quarter to get 22 and a quarter inches. So when it's fully extended, center of pin to center of pin is going to be 22 and a quarter inches. All right, there again. Add the stroke length to the retracted length to know it's fully extended length. Okay, let's roll on now to the next part. Let's talk about the threads in these cylinders. Okay. Now, here's the two inch cylinder. Here's the two and a half inch cylinder. Both of these have three eighths pipe threads. here. Now, let me bring a 3 inch one over here. This is the 3 by 8 cylinder. Move this one back over out of the way. Now, as you'll notice, 3 8 inch pipe threads, half inch pipe threads. Now, so then there, there again, and notice how the threads come all the way to the top. And that's, there again, that's your standard pipe thread. These are female pipe threads. And this is how these cylinders would work. They can be double acting cylinders or single acting cylinders. Most uses that we see with most of our customers, they are double acting cylinders. We'll use this one as an example. In a sense, as we talked about on the, um, as we as we talked about on a, another series of the log splitters, fluid would come in here, get behind the piston, push out, make the cylinder travel out. 
and then when you want to bring the cylinder back in, fluid diverts by moving your valve to bring fluid in this hole and bring the cylinder back in. As I mentioned, these are rated for 2500 PSI. Now, let's say if you had a unique, and I know on lots of older farm equipment, there are just one hose going to the cylinder. All right, so yes, you, you could make that still work by using what we call breather plugs. Let's look at, we carry the 3 eighths as well as the half inch. Okay, little drain hole there, or, or air, it's just a way for air to escape. And yes, some, some, a small amount of fluid will also come out. But what happens in that case, they just simply screw in the, screw in on the working end. And while we're talking about screwing fittings in here, never use Teflon tape on, on threads before it's going into these cast ends. Always use like a pipe dope or a plumber's type putty because, because the excess of the dope and the, the putty will work its way back up to the top. However, on the Teflon tape, it makes the, the outer dimensions of these threads a little bit larger. And going into this cast type steel, here's an example, you know, this is another part of the cylinder clevis end, but you see this is cast metal and any too much force going upon it could cause hairline cracks which could lead to leaks. So we put the plug in, breathe the plug in. Now what will happen here? Fluid's coming into this cylinder, traveling through pushing the, the piston out, but yet on whatever you're, you're lifting of course would be heavy and most likely when you let the pressure off or, or pull the valve back to where no more fluid was coming in this end, the weight of whatever this cylinder is holding up would help push it back down and slowly with the air escaping through this vent hole that we looked at earlier on here right there escaping through that and you would there again use the pipe up to seal it then next time you wanted to extend it apply the pressure back on this end push it out same process coming back in now we do offer a line of hydraulic fittings to attach into these to these things and to these cylinders, you know, for various type ones that you can also find or on, on our website or in our some of our for other information that we do have. All right, now let's move over just a moment and talk about the energy cylinder. The tag information is a little different. As I mentioned, we, we've been uh, selling energy cylinders for years. Fine product made in Monticello, Iowa. And this particular cylinder, as it reads, their numbering system is different. Where over here on the Grizzlies, we saw it said 3 by 8, 2 by 8, 2 and a half by 8. But here we see a 3012, which there again means that it's 3 inch bore, 12 inch stroke. This particular one has a 1 and a quarter inch diameter rod. Now, let's talk about the thread types that these cylinders have. Take notice here that these threads do not really come up to the top. There's like a recessed place right here on top. Alright, that's where our O-ring goes. As you see the O-ring on this particular shipping plug, that the O-ring is there, and when screwed down in there, that O-ring will rest right in this recessed spot and seals it off. So, ORB would be like O-ring ball style fitting would go in there. And no need to put uh, pipe dope or anything on there, any type of thread sealant because the o-ring should do its job and hold it in. Alright, and on all these cylinders they have one inch diameter pins that fit into these holes. You do need to fill up the entire part of the hole. If not, here was an application to where uh, in some experimenting going on to where the person had a smaller uh, bolt in it whatever their application was but you can see that the hole became egg shaped because it was it was moving back and forth within the hole instead of bringing it all with it and at some point during one of its uh, operating times see it, it found the weak spot and broke broke right off so now that particular customer now has has uh, adjusted their use of it and found a bushing that would drive into these holes to allow for the smaller bolt to go in and it was used in like a shearing type operation. Okay, now, we'll take just a quick break here, just a moment, we'll come back and we'll break down this cylinder and 
show you the insides of a of a cylinder there.